Hello, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the importance of criticism. Now when you're in art school and you're sitting through about six hours of absolutely mind-numbingly boring critiques every single week, you grow to really dislike them. But as soon as you get out on your own, you really start kind of wishing you'd have some feedback. It's uh, easy to sort of spend too much time in your own studio, inside your own head, wandering off in all these really random directions that don't make sense to anyone but you. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's really helpful to have something to kind of rein you back in and make sure you're not just going off into crazy land because a lot of artists spend a lot of time there and you probably don't want to be one of them. Another problem with the lack of criticism is um, if you read a lot of art reviews, they tend to never really be that critical. Um, what passes for criticism is more like thinly veiled PR. Uh, it's just, it's pointless. It just kind of either inflates your ego or it serves as a launching pad for a, you know, for an art writer with an agenda to just use your art as a base point for them to write about whatever they're interested in. You know, a good technical critique. That's what's missing. And without that, it's easy to get a overly inflated sense of your own worth and your own abilities. So here is a wonderfully simple little technique that I do to try to stay relatively grounded. I mean, I'm still part of the way in crazy land, just not all the way yet. This is my secret. Sharpies. And a binder. Okay, so here's my binder where I've got the original source image and my painting. And I use the Sharpies to scribble notes, or either circle areas that I really like, circle things I really dislike, or I'll just use a black as a neutral observational comment. So I might put, yeah, I like that part, or, nah, that's not so good. Yeah, that's awesome. Or that looked troubling. Oh, yeah, that, you know. So I find having the sketch and the painting is very helpful. Uh, it's, it's good to know, is the awesome coming from the way I'm painting something, or is it there originally in the source image? Generally, you should be your own worst critic. If other people are finding mistakes that you're not noticing, then that's a problem. So here's something that I I did that, that was not in the source image, I just kind of did that and really liked it, so I made a note. Because yeah, sometimes you'll have things that fail horribly and you want to know, did I suck right there? Or was it in the source image? And you can go to other images that have also failed and realize, oh, that's just something in the source images. So now when I'm sketching things out, I know what to avoid and what to focus on. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, do that. Or it might keep a note of, you know, I tried something different there, and I think it worked well. There's something that I should have learned three paintings ago, but didn't, and it failed again. One important thing with this technique is to separate yourself time-wise. Uh, when you've just freshly finished painting something, it's very easy to think something that came to you easily isn't very good, and something that you had to put a lot of work into and spent a lot of time on is very good. But sometimes something that you fart out in five minutes is amazing, and something that you anguished over for months is crap. And uh, when it's fresh in your mind, it's a little muddled or confused. So when you take these pictures and file them away for a year or so, and then come back to them, the, the memory of actually making them is, uh, is gone, and you just see the art for what it is, and then it's that much easier to go, oh, that's good, that's crap. You forget about what went into it. Another thing I do with this binder is put all the images inside plastic sheets. So when I'm writing the notes, I'm not actually writing on the image, it's, you know, on the sheet. And this is handy because I can mark these up, make all the notes I want, store it away, and then three years later I might change what I'm doing, changing what I'm looking for, so I can change the sheets and mark them up again and find new things and critique my work again without my old decisions sort of interfering with me. I think it's very important to be very aware of where you've came from and what you've done up until this point because a lot of times something that you did that seemed random at the time turns out to be critical a few years down the road and something that you thought was so important turns out to be just the first step in a wrong direction so by keeping careful tabs on all this stuff I find it uh, really helps it's it's kind of like that whole, um, you know, those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. Um, if you forget where you screwed up on a painting in the past, you're very likely to make that same mistake again. So by keeping all this kind of fresh in my memory, 
when I'm in the studio working, I don't have to go, hmm, is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? I can go, well, the last 10 times I've done this, it's a bad idea. It's probably going to be a bad idea this time too. So yeah, the importance of self-critiquing. And of course, if you don't feel like doing all this, you just have to find yourself some artist friends who are real dicks and don't mind tearing you apart. But yeah, if you have a keen eye, you'll see things that no one else will. So do it yourself.